Hello everyone. Now we will start with a new topic as a part of cross applications. And our new topic is how we can send data from one client of SAP to another client of SAP using ALE. Now the first thing. Many people confuse between the customer and the client. See, I'm not talking about customer. Customer is the one for whom you are providing the services, which is a physical entity. I'm talking about the client number of SAP system. How we can send that data from one SAP client to the another SAP client. Suppose if I will talk about this particular system, if I will log in into the SAP system, so what is the client number of SAP system? It is 100. So how we can send the data from one client number of SAP system to another client number of SAP system. Suppose we have two client numbers of SAP system. One is 100 client, another is 200 client. Suppose we want to send the data from 100 client to 200 client. So 100 is the sender and 200 is the receiver. This is our requirement. And I'm specifically using the word ALE. You all know, yes, we have two methods of IDOC. One is ALE and another is EDI. In case of ALE, the format of data is never, never changing. In case of EDI, the format of data is changing. So ALE is always between SAP to SAP system. That's why I'm saying we will send the data from one SAP client to the another SAP client. Do not think that I'm talking about client means whom you are providing the services. No, I'm talking about the client number of SAP system. And yes, the best part of this topic is we always has a static step, nine to 10 steps, but only only the message type is changing. Suppose if you want to send the materials, we have a different message type. If you want to send the sales order, we have a different message type. But always, always we have dedicated set of nine to 10 steps, which we need to perform whenever we want to send the data from one SAP client to another SAP client using ALE. I am specifically using the word ALE because we will not change the format of that data. The data format will be as it is. Now, now we will go for the first step. What is our first step? Before we start with the first step, we will take a requirement. We will send the materials from one client of SAP to another client of SAP system. And what are our two clients? One client is 100 and another will be 200 client. 100 client will act as sender and 200 client number will act as receiver. And we will take a requirement that we will send the materials 
from one SAP client to another SAP client. It means whenever we will create the materials into 100 client, those materials will automatically be available in the 200 client. So how, how we can go for the practical of the same. Now the most, most important part, this activity is a combination of basis person and technical person. And basis person has to do so many configurations. A technical person stand alone can never, never achieve this requirement. A basis person has to do so many things. Whenever I will start with the steps, you can automatically recognize that these many steps need to be performed by the basis person. Without the help of basis person, you can never, never achieve this particular requirement because basis person has to set the logical system. Basis person has to set the RFC connection. So all these things needs to be done by the basis person. So we will start with the steps. So what is first step? First step is we need to create logical system. Now you all know, we already covered what is logical system. A logical system is a unique ID of the client within the SAP system. What is logical system? A logical system is used to identify a client in the SAP system or you can understand a logical system is a unique ID, unique ID of within the SAP system. Suppose I have SAP client 100, I have SAP client 200. So what is the unique ID of 100 client? What is the unique ID of 200 client within the SAP system that is called as logical system? A logical system is used to identify a client, a client in the SAP system. It is a unique ID, unique ID within the SAP system. And we already covered Whenever we will go for logical system, what is the naming convention? How, how we will give the logical system? System ID, CLNT is the keyword which we are using and client number. This is what we are always, always following. Logical system is a unique identification within the SAP system. So we have two clients, 100 client, 200 client. So what is the unique identification of 100 client? What is the unique identification of 200 client? And how, how we will give the logical system? System ID, CLNT client number. If I will go to 100 client, suppose, this is our 100 client. Just see this 100 client. If I will show you from here itself. If I will right click here. If I will show you the properties. What is the system ID? A4H. So what is the system ID? A4H. And what is the keyword? CLNT. And what is the client number? 100. So this is the unique identification of client number 100. And what is the unique identification for client 200? A4H CLNT 200. And yes, this is the logical system for client number 100. This is the logical system for client number 100. 200. Always, always 
we need to go for first step create logical system now this full creation of the logical system is done by the basis person even you do not have the rights for the transaction code to do this particular thing creation of the logical system is completely completely a basis person task